My name is Sam Owings. I'm a Queen Anne's County farmer. I've got 400 acre grain farm here where I grow wheat, soybeans, and sorghum. And this farm is uh, Hamilton Creek Farm, just it's a few miles outside of Chestertown, right off 213 in Queen Anne's County. This farm has been in my family since 1964. I just took it over about 12, 14 years ago. I grew up on a farm. I also spent uh, close to 20 years with a construction site development business that I belonged to me that I ran and operated and my knowledge through those construction uh, site work is what I uh, tailored into these programs to to help agriculture and control their stormwater pollution and we're out here today to show you some of the programs I've got going here I want to explain to you a little bit about the uh, topography here we've got uh, a spring here right behind us which is the headwaters of Hamilton Creek. And uh, on both sides of this spring, I've got strip, filter strips of CRP of trees. There's about 15 acres here, which is put in about 10 or 12 years ago. And at that time, when we were putting these trees in, I asked the conservationists, you know, I know these programs are good for the adjacent fields, but I asked them if they had any programs for, um, to, to address the water that's coming from higher elevations. We've got water coming through down this waterway here that comes from about a half a mile uphill. And they, um, they really didn't, couldn't come up with an answer for me. So since then, I've uh, developed my own programs to deal with water that comes from higher elevations into the streams unchecked. And uh, this particular spot right here shows there's a, there's a, a berm here to control, to stop the water. And I've got about a pond here, a shallow pond is about two or three feet deep. And it captures this water as it flows down the grass waterway and, and captures the water and releases it slowly and filters it into the stream instead of it just flowing in there randomly like it did before. And I've got, uh, uh, it's called a cascading system. And we've got a couple more here in the farm. Okay, right here we have um, another cascading system here. There's four wetland cells. They're about two feet deep. They were placed, put, installed in an existing grass waterway. So they used very little tillable land. It was basically land that was already untilled. You can see here too, the water that flows into this system is coming about a half a mile upstream on the other side of that tree line. Without this system in place, on a, on a large rain event, this runoff would just flow directly into the wetland or the Chesapeake Bay or Chester River. With these cells here, it's capturing the water, filtering it prior to releasing it, or maybe if the vent is not large enough, it may not re release any water at all. This one was completed in uh, 2000 and 12. So it's only been here about a year. But uh, the, the first system I built was completed in 2011. So we'll go over see that in a minute. But uh, as you can see, this, uh, this is holding some water here right now. Uh, it hasn't rained for several weeks, but when we do get some uh, rain event, this will fill up and capture the water and, and uh, sediment and nutrients and pollution along with it. Now this system here is another four cell system that was installed in a grass waterway. This system was completed in uh, 2011. And since then, I've gotten a grant from Maryland Industrial Partnerships, uh, partnered with University of Maryland, Dr. Alan Davis and intern Rosie Myers are working on this project. What, we're, what they're doing here is they're measuring the amount of water that flows into the system and they're taking water samples, measuring the uh, sediment, nitrogen, phosphorus, other possible pollutants that come into the system. And this is the exit of the system right here, where you see a V weir. And there's a little tube here where the as the water starts to flow out, it fills this tube up and it will measure the um, volume of water that flows out of the system. And it will also take periodic water samples from this 
we'll pipe right there and can, and save them in the, um, in the in the equipment there for the researcher to come collect the samples and and get the data water samples and data from from them. And this uh, research project started in February of 2013. It's uh, which will be completed, and we're trying to get another year uh, through MIPS to try to keep this project going for at least two years, maybe three years. All right, this is the uppermost wetland cell in the research project, and as you can see here, this is this flume measures the volume of water flow as it flows through into the basin and it at the same time takes periodic water samples and saves them for the researchers to come out so they can test the, what's in the water and they'll also have uh, data on the volume of water and there's also a, a rain monitoring device here that tells them how much rain they got during specific events. Um, as you see, this one has been, uh, been in, completed for about three years, and as you can see already, natural vegetation is, is uh, taking hold here. And um, another thing I'd like to mention is that this, there's 77 acres that drain from agricultural fields down in through this, in the, into this system. And most of it comes from my neighbor's property across the street in the county road. There's lots of advantages to this system as well. For one thing, you give up very little, if any, tillable land at all. There was an existing grass waterway here before I started. I just cut these cells out, made it about 10, 20 feet wider. So we did take out a small amount of tillable land. Um, and these programs are also easily duplicated. I mean, you anybody can see what there is. It's just a matter of basically digging cells out of the ground. Uh, existing ground and and the materials used on this was very few. I uh, used grass seed, starter fertilizer, and some curlex to stabilize the embankments. And those were the only materials that were used on this job. It's mostly grading. Uh, and another thing about these programs is as soon as you put them in place, they start working. There's no waiting for years to get a return on it. These will give you a return as soon as you complete them and get them seeded. It also creates wildlife tab habitat. I've seen anything from deer, ducks, geese, blue herons, green herons, white herons, frogs, turtles, everything else is, uh, has uh, started to live on, in these ponds here. And I guess another thing that is uh, advantage to these programs is when I dug these out, the soil, uh, the spoils was a saleable product, had value and I was able to defer some of the cost of the installation through selling the topsoil that came out of these wetland cells. The main advantage of these and why they're in here is to trap the sediment, nitrogen, phosphorus, and other pollution that flows off these fields, contain it on the land, instead of letting it just flow into the creek, tidal water. All right, now this is a wetland here uh, this was established years ago along with a, a pond that's on the farm and all of the cells and waterways flow into this wetland after they go through the cascading system. Uh, one thing, another thing worth mentioning is in this past June uh, we had a tropical storm Andrea came through on around June 7th. It dropped five and a half inches of rainfall in five days and the system, cascading system in place here did not discharge any water. It saved every bit of it. And then we got another rain event and we got about an inch and a half of rain that, that filled up and then it started flowing into this wetland and then into the pond. But this is, uh, this is about a 10 acre pond. It was built uh, in 1964. And also another point worth mentioning is that this wetland and this pond is the, is the last place this water goes through before it enters Hamilton Creek. Uh, if you look in the background, there's a dam back there and a, and a discharge pipe. And once it flows through this wetland, into the pond, through the discharge pipe, and into a stream that goes under Route 213 and right into, and into Hamilton Creek and then the Chester River. If anybody's interested in learning more about high-impact environmental, we have a website. It's www.highimpactenvironmental.org, and you can see um, uh, more of what about what my organization does you can also contribute and uh, support me any way you can